All right, guys, thank you for joining us today on Instinctive Addiction Archery. Okay, this is more or less part two of a video that we just finished up on arrow fletching. For the guys at home that want to do their own uh, arrow building, okay, uh, we had several requests, and you know, when we get uh, messages and calls and requests to do videos and tutorials on things, we always try to do that, and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, so, okay, we uh, did in the first part, if you will, the arrow fletching process, which was super easy, uh, using the wraps and the feathers and the boning system, which is the super easy way, like I have here behind me. Uh, so, in literally a few minutes, you can have your arrows wrapped and fletched. Okay, now, uh, this being a particular arrow order for customer, uh, I'm going to take you guys through the process of what we do to actually build the arrows. Once we have them wrapped and fletched according to what that our customer has requested uh, or ordered, what we do next. It's very easy, guys. Uh, I have a D-cut arrow saw, which is a precision arrow saw. If you don't have an arrow saw, you can use a Dremel, okay? You can, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can use a Dremel with a cutting wheel. It's just very hard to get it uh, squared. So in that case, especially, and I still use these even with a precision machine, I use a squaring, squaring bit uh, that goes just, this is what it is that goes in the drill, guys. Uh, I have it in my little drill. This is a squaring bit, okay? And what this does, once you cut it, especially if you're going to cut them with a Dremel, you know it's not going to be square, so you're going to have to put your arrow shaft in there, and you're going to have to actually, you're going to have to square it up. This little thing uh, actually sands uh, dead square to give you a really, really good square end on the cut end of the shaft so that you have perfect broadhead alignment and don't get any wobble. Okay, very important. So, uh, this particular uh, batch of arrows uh, was ordered for the shaft to be cut at 28 inches, okay? Now, on the D-cut, which, guys, if you're going to buy one, I recommend buying these. They're super good. Three Rivers has them. Um, you can actually get them on Amazon and different places if you can find them. But the D-cut uh, is a, uh, it's a pro-cut model, uh, 110 volt. Uh, has a knob, you slide it out to, to set it, and whatever you set this thing on, it cuts them precise, okay? Now, you do have to pull the knocks to, before you cut. So in other words, I just pulled the knocks out of these uh, gold tip traditional 500s that I'm building here today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these right fast and show you guys how we actually do this. And we are going to be outfitting these by order, which is what we typically do uh, on a build. Uh, what we recommend to the customers, like this particular one, um, a bow in the uh, upper 40s, a 500 with 250 grains up front is the perfect combination, okay? That would be using a 100 grain brass insert and a 150 grain uh, tip. That's what we're gonna put in today. And we do use hot melt on these. Uh, the reason we use hot melt, when you do the cleaning process and the preparation, hot melt glue, uh, this, this boning ferrule type glue is a super bond, okay? Yet, if you have to take your insert out or you have to tune your head for any crazy reason, you can heat it and turn it or remove it, not a problem. Whereas if you put epoxy in, it's done, it's there forever, so you, you can never take it out. All right, so that's why we use the hot melt. All right, guys, I'm gonna go through this, and uh, mine actually has a little uh, foot pedal on here that does the cutting, so I'm gonna cut these right quick and show you how we do the insert process on them. All right, we just lay them in there. This D cut arrow saw is precision, it cuts square. But well, let's just say you guys just cut it on a Dremel. You definitely need to do this process. 
But this is triple insurance that you're gonna have a perfect end. It really is. Which is important when it comes to broadhead flight, I'll guarantee you. that's done, next thing you want to do is you want to dunk them in some acetone because you've got a lot of carbon dust particles in there. Okay, what I do, I just put them in my little acetone can, shake them around, lay them on the napkin here, just shake it around, let it wash all that carbon dust out because it goes all the way around that inside when you do that cut. Guarantee you. And if you know carbon dust is no different than any other dust, glue will not stick to it very well. Okay? So you want to make sure that's clean. And that stuff evaporates really fast. It's a good thing about acetone. You can use denatured alcohol, it works great too. Um, I actually like the denatured alcohol real well because it evaporates so fast. Okay? So now, now that we have that done, and I'll do, I'll, I'll flip these bad boys over. And I'm gonna make sure that that is dry completely. The uh, acetone. Good to go. Now, what I typically do, I use the old, the old uh, propane bottle with the uh, little torch end on it. That's what I like, quick and easy. Turn it on, get you just enough flame to go there about, uh, about yay much. Okay, what you wanna do, take your pliers. These are archery pliers. I love these pliers because they're so versatile. They're actually knocking pliers, but they work so good. Grab it by the field tip, okay? Grab it by the field tip. Take your glue stick in your other hand, okay? What you wanna do, barely heat this brass. Don't overheat it either. But you just wanna barely heat your brass and then start, start heating the glue. And this glue melts really quick, okay? And you wanna make sure, here is the trick to this, guys. Make sure that you get a good gooey, gooey coat. Not over thin by the heat, but a good gooey, thicker uh, coat. Stick it in and twist. Spin that arrow on it and push. And this stuff dries quick, it, it hardens quick. Till you get a good bond, take it, push it down for about two seconds. There you go. Layer off to the side. And then I'll show you what else we gotta do to it. Okay. Heat the insert just a little bit. Start heating your glue till it just gets gooey enough that it'll go all the way around. That's why I like the hot melt so well. And I'm telling you, I put plenty of glue on them. I don't skin them. Even though we're gonna clean the excess off, it's just a big little ring that we peel. But you want to make sure you've got a really good glue bond. Spin. Push it all the way down. Seat it. That's why you want to square in on these things. Okay. Heat her up. I want to see how I'm applying this. As I've got it heated, you guys can see. I'm getting plenty, plenty of glue. Plenty of glue on that thing, okay? Warm it up just a hair if it thickens up for a second. Till it, till you feel just a little bit of resistance. You know, you don't want it sliding on super easy because that way it's just too thin and you just don't have enough glue on. And I know most of the excess is gonna push out, but I like to build, I found that doing that, they stay in a lot better. 
they just stay in the shaft when you shoot really hard thick targets that tend, tend to pull inserts out that when you get a good heavier coat good heavier coat for some reason they just hold up better I don't know why but if you overheat the glue and thin it out too much there's just not enough of this type of glue to really bond in other words I like them I like them gooey where you when you're pushing on you feel a little bit of push resistance against it just a little resistance where you know it's got a maximum amount of glue in there and it's pushing what excess out but there's no voids basically now these inserts have got tiny grooves in them they're called glue grooves that's what they're actually all those little rings are glue grooves and they're meant to let glue get down in them Good old bond on in there. All the way around. Okay. Plenty. 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 All right. Last one. And then I'm going to show you guys what else we do here. See, making the right arrow, building the right arrow for a bow is really important uh, to have enough front of center weight that's why we love using typically 100 grain brass inserts uh, they're very simple and effective especially on gold tips we love the 100 grain brass we'll use 50 on some if it's a super heavy head setup if a guy you know has 250 grain heads or something you know that you might have to go back to a 50 grain but most people are running 100 grains on our setups so that they can utilize 150 175 or 200 grain head and not exceed the 300 grains up front on a 500 shaft now on 400s of course or 340s you can go on up as much as you choose to but the typical setup for guys that are shooting bows in the low to mid 40s uh even uh 47, 8, 9 pound bow, 50, whatever. Generally, a 500 uh, like this. All right, I'll show you the fill off. A 500 tunes very well with 250 grains up front. All right, this glue, basically, when you just start peeling it with your thumb, there it goes. It'll peel right off, clean, nice and clean. Just peels right off. If you let it sit too long, it gets very difficult because this stuff dries rock hard and as it cools. But if you'll get it within the first minute or two after you heat them up, just as soon as it sets, it will peel fairly clean. Uh, if not, it becomes a little more difficult because this is some very tenacious glue, very, very. And you wanna make sure that they're nice and clean around your insert there. Okay. Like I said, these little, it's kinda like a little donut here. Like I said, the longer that they sit, the more difficult that they become to get off. Which tells you that you've got a really good bond. But that's the part, that's where the cleaning comes in. If you don't clean these shafts, all right, see that one's already setting up, so I'll take my little pliers and I'll more or less just pinch that glue to get an edge started because I couldn't get my thumbnail up under it. Now, once you get under it, yes, you can go ahead and peel it right off. So if they, if they harden to a point that you can't get your nail under, take your little knocking pliers and just get you a little, little starting grab on it here. There you go. And that's all you need. Okay. There we go. Okay, those are in, clean, and done. Then all you want to do Let's put your inserts back in. Now what you're gonna have to do, every, I mean your knot, every knot has a little notch on it and it's basically just an alignment. That, that, that's all it is. And what you typically do, just for starters, is take that little bitty, little bitty perforated little, little line there, line it up with your cock feather, pretty much, pretty much even with the front of your cock feather. Pop her in. When you set it on your bow, you can fine tune it, spin it, turn it to make sure that your feathers are clear like you want them and that's what I do with all mine but just for 
for putting them back in purposes for now, I'll line that little bitty notch right there up with the front of the cock feather, and pop it in. And it's nine times out of 10, it's gonna be perfect, but you know, if you need to turn it just a little bit, you can. And just like that. I love the GT knocks because they do. They snap in very easy. Um, they're just great, great knocks. They fit the strings really well. Drop one. There he is. Okay. So, guys, we now have a completed arrow. Complete build. Complete build. And I'm going to weigh this one for you guys to show you exactly what we got here. I thought you might find this interesting. Let's just see what a 500 gold tip with wraps, fletchings, stock knocks, 100 grain brass inserts, and 150 grain hitch weights. Most people are targeting an arrow around the 500 to 550, anywhere from 5 to 550 in total arrow weight for a bow in the mid 40s, uh, even up to the upper 40s. That tends to be the perfect arrow size to tune. 525.5 grains, so there's a 525 right there. Perfect. This arrow will tune so well, it's incredible, out of any recurve or longbow between relatively 43 and 50 pounds. Uh, and it will actually shoot out of 52 and three pound bows, being that it's cut at 28 inches with this weight on it, it will still actually tune to one of those. But anything in the 40s, this setup is awesome. Awesome, awesome. And uh, that's because this is a 8.6 grains per inch shaft and it's heavy enough and tough enough for any hunting situation. So it's just a great all around arrow and relatively easy to build. So that's it guys for that one. Hope you enjoyed this and thank you guys again for joining us on Instinctive Addiction Archery. And as always, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.